Hello, in this one, let's do a physical shield strike build. It's a good damage scaling build, especially with Warrior or Shadow of Link Room, and has a decent amount of area of effect. Plus it has a new skin that came with the Wonderland event, and that skin looks sick. I'm not converting this into any other element, but you can if you want to. However, the main idea of conversion is to get extra damage amplification Link Runes. But on this one, you don't have to do as there are plenty enough to choose from. With that being said, let's get into the build. Early skill board should look something like this on the shield strike. So I have a water shadow in here because it's basically the best link. But she, if you don't have that one early, you can use preserve mana. You can use, if you want more damage, you can use something like slaughter. Or even acceleration, depending on what you need the most. After that, it's physical damage, confidence, quick attack, area effect, fine weakness. These are basically the best starter wounds you can, starter link wounds you can have. After that, Illusion Axe with Dampen Resource Cost, Convert Fire Damage and Extract Energies, so to basically pick up some extra damage from extracting fire energies. For movement, Shield Charge with Disarm and Roll. Shield Charge is really nice. Don't forget to le level it up a little bit, because after a few levels, you actually decrease the cooldown of the skill. For Attack Enhance, it's Fighter's Rot with Enhance Effect, Increase Duration and Time Acceleration. For Defense Enhance, it's Siphon Life with Time Acceleration and Increase Duration. Shadow Provocation with Shadow of Power, Lingering Shout, Hush It Shout, Increase Duration, Enhance Effect, and Buff Activation when hit. So it would, it would always proc whenever you get hit. It basically makes this skill rune to proc automatically. For Defense Seal, you can use Elemental Domain, Elemental Resistances, Chaos Resistance, or even Physical Domain, whatever you need the most. Veil of Protection is basically non-negotiable in this one as it gives you projectile damage shaken decrease. And this is the only source to pick up projectile damage shaken decrease, so this, is, this one is really nice. And remember to use Wind Veil, as Earth Veil gives you melee damage taken decrease. For Attack Seal, you can use Condensed Destruction early for Physical Damage Multiplier. Not a bad idea. Shadow of Justice to remove Crowd Control, but you want to have Buff Activation upon Crowd Control, so it would remove it automatically. Whenever you have this link, whenever you get CC'd, it actually gonna proc the skill it by itself. Dampen resource cost for Veil of Protection, Seal of Penance Destruction, and Shadow of Justice. Not a bad idea to keep your mana healthy. So this is basically the most optimal skill board you can have early into the game. For Zodiacs, it's pretty much default. There's only a few, few choices you can do. Afros into Forest, into Jewel, into Leaf. Root, pick up Physical Distortion, it gives you status effect rates. And that's gonna be useful later into the game. Into Rainbow, Elaborate Attack, 100%. Early, you can invest uh, 3 points for Super Speed for to get more Attack Speed Amplification, but this is only early. After that, you can pick up Breath with Annihilation, so we're trying to send as much area effect as we can. This is Shield Specific Nodes, and I highly suggest to pick up those. So you want to sign with physical damage when shield is equipped, heavy determination, fence is basically damage taken decrease, which is really nice, mysterious shield is damage amplification, then song of the good harvest is more damage taken decrease, and then shield expert is physical damage amplification. This is this is insane zodiac for the shield. You get so much out of it for only ten points. Be sure to use this one. Dust, again you want to pick up every effect, the certification, this is important one. In here for Fighting Spirit and Viper. This one, uh, Confirm Kill, is basically damage amp against certain enemies. For 5 points, 10% damage amp is actually a lot. Be sure to pick up this one. On this one, it's Physical Damage Amplification plus HP. And this one I picked up uh, Lightning, so with this one you're gonna be able to apply Shock, and Shock is really nice damage increase. For Spec, I suggest to go Hammer. For Powerful Hit and Area Damage Amplification, 
You're gonna have uh, two extra points when you finish green quest in Death Saluto after you finish the campaign. This is the same thing, nine, two extra points when you finish the campaign in Saluto, when you finish the green quest after the campaign. So Desperate Hit and Damage Amplification. And the last one is simple, you want to pick up HP Absorb on hit, Damage Amplification, and then into Area Damage Amplification. This is the most optimal Zodiacs you can run early into the game, and late into the game also. Late into the game you can make some switches, but most of the stuff you're gonna keep. For Chance and Blessings, it's simple. You can start with Boreal Alyssa, and if you need HP, you can go for Hamal. Prioritize Hamal. I would say keep only 3 Blessings. You can do the 4th one caster, but I don't know if you're gonna go for this, but it's viable. But I would say 230 Alyssa, 230 Boreal, and 140 Hamal is probably gonna be the best you can do on this one. For the charms themselves, of course, you are looking for crit rate, crit damage. Those two affixes are the most important one. And the third one you can pick up whatever you can find. HP, HP multipliers, or some chaos or elemental resistances, whatever you can do. For relics is simple. You can go caster first to pick up uh, on the passive side enhanced range and on the active side you can go into sensory simulation with cooldown recovery speed and increased buff effect. After that you can do a speaker. On the passive side you can pick up uh, powerful damage, this is the best one. On the active side if you don't like the caster one you can switch to pulverize and pick up cooldown recovery speed, increase buff effect, and at the same time you can you can craft more pulverize effect on your ring, so this is not a bad idea. After that you want Sabda, of course for enhanced chaos resist on the passive side, that's the best one. After that you only have 15 levels left, so the only choice you have is basically Boreal for some extra HP. For itemization, we're gonna keep it simple. As we are doing a critical build, we are looking for highest critical rate base as possible. I'm, cho I'm choosing Blunt, but you can use Ward Axe. You can do even Scepter if you can somehow make the spell damage work on this build. But otherwise, I would say Blunt is really default option and not a bad one. So, highest critical base possible, and on the affixes, we are looking, of course, Priority is gear critical rate, after that it's uh, critical damage, weapon attack damage, physical flat, weapon attack damage flat, and weapon speed. This is how the best weapon sh would look like, but remember, just at least get gear critical rate and then some one other node, one other affix that gives you damage. For the necklace, it's simple, you're looking for critical damage implicit neck. On this one you can only do physical damage multi and physical damage flat on the offensive rolls, after that you can pick up whatever you need, HPs, resistances, or manas, whatever you need the most. On the ring we are looking for attack critical rate implicit ring, and on the ring itself you are looking for attack critical rate multiplier, critical damage multiplier, physical damage multiplier, and attack speed multiplier. Priority would be a attack critical rate. And critical damage. Attack speed and physical damage roll if you can. After that you can pick up any any prefixes and suffixes that you need the most. HPs and again some resistances if you need those. For the chest and for the items in general, for the you want to roll armor multiplier. For this one to cap your armor as fast as possible. After that you want some HPs, multipliers and flat. On the suffix side, you're looking for resistances, you can also pick up hit rate, but hit rate with the shield strike should be good, even without the hit rate nodes. For boots, there is only one difference, is that on the boots you want to pick up movement speed, don't forget that. And on the gloves you can pick up extra attack speed if you need, and an extra attack critical rate and critical damage, if you are looking for offensive gloves. I can show you some default stuff. But I'm showing this basically on every single build, but Boreal's Horizon is a nice build to keep your energies going. It increases your energy count by 2, so up to 7. After that, I would say Caster Refraction 
for flat critical rate. This is gonna enable you to even use, instead of high critical base, low critical base weapons. Remember that one. After that, there is some, of course, there is some better items, Medal of Penance, you get Convert Mana, Zodiac Node, which is nice, it helps you with, it helps with your mana. And Caprizat, of course, it gives you insane amount of energies, and we are doing energies on this build, so this is a big damage increase also. On the unique side, I can show you another one that is a blunt mountain root. It's a really high base damage weapon with a low base critical. But if you're using Caster Refraction Ring, this blunt is really, really good. I'm showing you the low tier one. Of course, there is a high tier one. This one is even more insane. But this is nice one to use on Shield Strike. Till you start crafting your, your weapons. If you have those, of course. And that would be it. That basically sums it up on the unique side. Skill board later in the game should look something like this. So let's start with the shield strike. So we have Warrior Shadow. On Warrior Shadow, we want to go Source Awakening. On melee damage amplification, you want to go Origin Awakening. So you could inflict Dot. Otherwise, you won't be able to proc your Blood Explosion. Remember that one. Awakening is necessary for this one. Grip Strength is simple. Go Source for Damage Amp and One Hander. For Iron Will, go more damage. So Origin. For Fighting Spirit is Source for more Spirit Stacks and Strike Damage Amplification. And I'm using Mana Storming here. You want to go for Verity Awakening, but if you have enough area effect on your Shield Strike, instead you can switch Mana Storm to Concentrated Area Damage. This is gonna be a little bit more damage, but at the same time your mana is gonna be in much healthier spot. Cause Mana Storm increases mana by quite a bit. On Shield Strike, you have two choices for the Awakenings. You can go Verity for more map clear with two strike range count, and you can do Origin. Origin is kind of the same. It changes to one big shield, and it gives you area damage amplification at the same time. Whatever you choose between these two is to some degree your preference. At the same time, I added Blood Explosion with Convert to Poison Damage. So I don't think if you need to convert it to cold damage, as cold damage is gonna give you elemental damage dampenings. But this build is already pretty tanky, and I would say use poison damage if you want to get a little bit more attack speed and you are not capped on your attack speed. And of course on blood explosion you want extract energy and dampen resource cost. On blood explosion awakening you don't need to level up it to max level, but source one is really nice as you only need three stacks to activate your blood explosion instead of five by default. So that source awakening is really nice. Another thing that I did in here is I only keeping shield charge, but in order to do that, you want to awaken it to verity and you want to level up your shield charge as levels on the shield charge is going to reduce your cooldown. So keep that in mind. On attack enhance, I added decrease duration, but this only works when you have big enough duration already. And basically what you do, you reduce the duration of your fighter's rat, but you get skill rune effect. For this one, you want to hit certain breakpoint, but that breakpoint is gonna depend on your stats. So test in, in arena if decrease duration is worth for you. And I added Seal of Striking, cause physical damage multiplier later into the game is not... Uh, you have enough of his damage multiplier already, especially when you generate uh, fire energies. So Seal of Striking is, is your best choice. On the Awakening side, there is nothing, nothing too good on this one. I always pick up Verity for resource cost dampening, basically. So that this is pretty well-balanced skill board. That's everything I wanted to say. One topic that I didn't talk about is the unique shoes called Lover's Roll. But about that one, it takes a little bit more, more time for me to test that one, but I'm gonna post a video about that one later. For now, it looks like it's kinda not necessary, but my, 
my idea might change. But for this one, thanks for watching and see you on the next one.